Welcome to a new edition of Whiteboard Friday. My name is Aleida Solis. I am an SEO consultant and founder of Orainti. And today I am here to share with you long hanging food SEO. We all know that we want to maximize the opportunities, the chances for success in SEO. And for that, what we tend to do is to prioritize those tasks, those activities that will tend to have a higher output, a higher impact, and lower effort. And although it's true that this usually depends on the context of our SEO process or project, the restrictions, the opportunities, the, the resources, the flexibility, etc. The reality is that it, it tends to be always this, let's say, um, strategic agnostic type of activities that are, tend to be always there for us to leverage, right? Um, but however, what we tend to do in our SEO processes is this, right? We start the SEO process with uh, audit research from uh, keyword competition research to technical SEO, content audit, um, competition analysis, backlink analysis, etc. And this tends, tends to take a little bit of time, like four weeks or so, for example, let's say. Then we need to analyze the, the, all of the data, etc. in order to generate actionable prioritized SEO recommendations that at the end of the day are the ones that we share with our SEO clients or SEO stakeholders in general for execution, right? So all of this process tends to take a little bit of time. Um, unfortunately, the issue here is that after this time, we tend to face challenges about like, yes, impatience of the, the, the stakeholders or the owners of, of the project, right? And it, it's, it's natural. However, as I mentioned before, we can, and what I propose here is to develop this low hanging fruit analysis in parallel of the usual SEO process uh, audit in order to detect these low-hanging fruits that we tend to have, and I will I will share later on which, um, in order to start implementation right away, right? Uh, this might seem counterintuitive because you may say, oh my God, I laid that extra work besides the one of the audits. But the reality is that the, ideally here, we should set already some frameworks, some reports um, with data that we tend already to have in the SEO process in order to implement this, right? And, and the benefits of this low hanging fruit um, analysis and then implementation that we can start right when we are already doing the usual audit is that it will mitigate impatience from clients or stakeholders. We will start with those actions that will be much like easier or simpler to coordinate, right? So. What I'm talking about here about low hanging fruit, realistically, I am going to go through three scenarios here of these low hanging fruit opportunities that very likely will also be applicable for any of your projects, right? Uh, improving the click to rate of top rank pages. If we go and take a look uh, of our uh, current rankings using whatever ranking tools that you use, uh, Google Search Console even, uh, you can take a look at which are those top rank pages that are already ranking for relevant queries that are really important and meaningful for you um, that have opportunities to improve their click to rates. That the click to rates are too low for the rankings of these pages, and you can try to identify if the something some of the things off with the snippets, with the titles, with the meta descriptions, for example, or if these pages are not maximizing the visibility because of the lack of structured data implementation and the reason why they are not generating rich snippets or including a very important, meaningful, relevant sort of feature, for example. And that is the reason of why the click to rate is too low. And you can go and straightforward improve those, right? With the snippets too, I have to say, I have found uh, many more scenarios in which uh, Google was rewriting the title, which is now more common than before. And even if Google tries to rewrite in a way that is still meaningful and relevant, um, the core key aspect of that particular page uh, a few times have been eliminated. Or uh, maybe the core page is still there, but when you compare it with your top competitors with the, all the pages ranking uh, in that same SERPs to identify that they are actually showing additional data, additional insights that you are not because of 
being cut out, and well, that, that is certainly a missed opportunity for you. So go and take a look and prioritize the analysis versus the straightforward analysis with the data that you already have for those snippets and those sort of features that you could be leveraging but are not. Uh, then you want to take a look also at uh, those relevant queries that you are ranking with non-relevant pages. Uh, maybe in the past you created pages that better match the intent for those queries, not anymore, um, or maybe you created at some point many different pages targeting similar queries that made sense in the past, but not anymore either, right? Um, and you may find scenarios of content cannibalization issues or lack of content issues, right? Um, and for that, what I will highly, highly, highly recommend is to analyze for which of your relevant queries you're ranking with more than one page uh, to identify, to assess if this is detrimental in that scenario, if uh, less people are clicking or know where to click because of that, if you could be consolidating these pages in order to run better, to pass the value to a single page and to consolidate all of the metrics in a single page instead. And for that, highly, highly recommend to check um, those relevant queries for which you have a couple of more than a single page, right? And then if which is the right page to rank, if it is better to just to have one redirect to a single URL or to differentiate this additional uh, page that you have there because you can identify that it might be also valuable to just tweak it a little bit or optimize a little bit to refer it and to rank to another query that is equally as relevant for you too. Second scenario here uh, for low hanging fruit opportunities is to optimize internal links of almost ranking pages, right? You probably have these pages that are not yet in the top three or top five positions as these others, um, but are in the top 10 already, top six, top seven, et cetera, et cetera. Almost ranking for very, very important, meaningful, highly search, uh, highly uh, relevant and, and search queries. Uh, but when you analyze these pages, you identify very quickly that they are relevant, the content is okay, but it's the lack of backlinks that is holding you back, right? And so how do we do this? Whenever you're uh, analyzing these pages, you want to grab, you want to take a look at all the backlinks per page, like, like very quick backlink, how did they error? All the internal links per page, when you call this, the, your website, you will see how many internal links each of those have from different, uh, all of the different pages of your website. And you want to pretty much consolidate this data in a single sheet to identify those cases of these pages for which you're in position uh, for position fifth, position six, that potentially might have a lot of backlinks, but very few internal links, or vice versa. You're linking from each of your um, internal uh, pages, but have very, very few backlinks. So there might be opportunities here too, and for that, you should better link to almost ranking pages uh, for popular queries that you're not internal linking well from, from the footer, from the top navigation, from secondary navigations, for example. And for those popular pages that have a lot of backlinks, for example, but uh, they're, they're not necessarily passing well the value to those meant to be ranked pages, you can leverage this to better cross-link to those, right? And for those that are, what are they are lacking is not internal links, but backlinks. You already have great candidates to start your uh, link building campaigns with already. So this can also accelerate a little bit the analysis that you're doing in parallel. Last but not least, detect search shift of content DK. There might be content that you created some time ago, some years ago, that it was perfect at that time to target and to rank for certain queries. But potentially Google later on updated uh, or shift the, the rank pages for this query because they identified that the intent was different, that they changed. I, I have seen many uh, scenarios in which very broad queries that used to list a lot of uh, PLPs, uh, product listing pages, are nowadays ranking more guides and far less product listing pages, right? So you want to identify these shifts. Also, potentially, some articles that you wrote like a few years ago that were like the top or the best tools for this or that, or the top of the best products for this or that. Oh, they, they did a little bit of update, right? And you forgot that they needed to be updated every year, for example. So these are the scenarios that I am talking about here. And for this is um, critical to go and take a look uh, at your, again, your run tracking uh, data, or even your Google Search Console and identify 
like the, the, the number of clicks, the number of uh, the, the position and the click rate that your top content, your meaningful content through the customer journey have been getting in the last few months to see if it is going down, if it is dropping, right? And if that's the case, to go and take a look at it and see if there's opportunity to refresh or diversify a little bit, depending on the scenario for which queries um, the, the content is dropping, and update this existing content to keep its relevance based on the other top rank pages, right? If you see that you're dropping a lot, and which are those of the pages that are like now are ranking you to identify the gap versus yours. Also, create new content to better fulfill the need in case you identify that, no, 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 the, the page that uh, I, I was targeting to rank for this query. It doesn't make sense anymore because now Google is ranking uh, much more informational content and this was much more commercially driven or transactionally driven, right? So you can, again, uh, prioritize much more faster the development of this other type of content. So as you can see, with this very low hanging fruit, I will say, with data that you tend to already have within the SEO analysis, you can accelerate in parallel this analysis to identify low hanging fruit opportunity that you can start executing right away, see results faster, mitigate the impatience of your clients, and all the gains much easier with your SEO process. So. Hopefully, this will serve to you to apply through the different projects that you work in and achieve results faster. Thank you very much.